1957, Ford was losing market share. Their T-Bird was not selling anywhere near as well as the Corvette. The two-seater Thunderbird, which was going to be their sports car, just wasn't cutting it. So what did they do to try and bring back the younger buyer? What they did is they sent two T-Birds down to Peter DiPaolo's shop down in California. Now he realized that it wasn't just going to be cosmetics that was going to bring back this young buyer. It was going to be a bunch of engineering and a bunch of tricks, and they're going to eventually have to prove it at the racetrack. They built two of them. That's all they built. There's talk that they were built for. They didn't. They built the two cars. This car here had the 312 engine, and the other car had a big Lincoln or Mercury engine in it. He added a quick change rear end. He added special rear leaf springs. He added four shocks in the back for performance and stability. He also changed the front geometry of the front end. No, this car drove so well and ran so good that I, I was really proud of it. Inside the car, well, he realized he had to gut everything. It was still a heavy car, so what did he do next? He lightened the car. He added aluminum skin to the hood, the doors, the trunk lid, and created a really cool tonneau over the back to had with, help with aerodynamics. The next thing he did, added a set of Hellebrand wheels and a cool exhaust system. The next thing is he had to do is he had to prove that it would work. And we were at New Smyrna uh, practicing and Curtis got down in a corner a little deeper than he should have, and he bumped with one of the other horse car runners and uh, kind of knocked him out and <clears throat> boondocked a little bit. So that left me there, and my job was, he said, don't worry about winning the race. <clears throat> Just go out and finish ahead of the Corvettes. And I ended up doing that, and by doing that, we ended up second overall. Carol Shelby in a Ferrari uh, uh, won the race, and I was second. And I think he backed off uh, for me a little bit because we were together at the end of the race. Well, since 1957, this car has never turned a tire in angst again. Uh, they stayed at home in a moody shop for quite a while, and they didn't know what to do with them. And Ford, uh, everybody had a, manufacturers had to pull their horns in from racing due to economy or something. Big engine car was sold to somebody back east, and he made a modified out of it. And he really uh, destroyed it, really. So I'm surprised to see this came through the wars without any problems at all. Now the really cool thing about this restoration is because the car only did one race, did very well, didn't hit anything, didn't even touch another car, the body on the car is just beautiful. Yeah, it's back like it was, and I don't think it was uh, in too bad a shape to start with. Sure, we had a sandblast, and they probably had to replace the plexiglass and the paint and everything, but uh, the car is sitting in here looking at it, it's... Uh, uh, just like it was. If you look at some of the really cool items on this, the original headlight deflectors here were plexiglass here, which again was an aerodynamic aid. He had a bumper in front, so I guess he was expecting some action, and all the trim has been meticulously restored, polished, plated, done what it needs, it's perfect. If you look inside the interior, original steering wheel, original gauge layout. I never did figure out all the switches on it. Matter of fact, when I got ready to drive it, uh, start the race, or even for practice, Chuck Day, the mechanic in the car, he reached in, I held the clutch in, and he did all the button pushing and got it going. He's okay, you're on your own, and turned me loose. If you look over to the left, underneath all that aluminum tonneau cover, they have an extra oil tank. Oil's fed back and forth in between a cooler through that. You can see the rear end, perfectly detailed. The undercarriage is all done body color. So what's a car like this worth? Great driver, great history, the only one left in the world got to be worth somewhere between $250,000 and $500,000. And watch for cars like this, the one-off specials, to go up in value. As all the muscle cars keep increasing, this stuff is going to keep going with it. Matter of fact, sitting in here right now brings back a lot of memories. I think I'll crank her up and get her out of the shop here and we'll go.